Ask whatever. And it will be given you. Okay. What does First Thessalonians 5.17 say? Pray continually. What translation is that? Makila's translation. That's good. Where did you study your Greek? All right. <laughs> you answered the question. Yeah, you correct. You correct, but we just want to know what translation. NIV. Pray continue. Okay. Uh, what other translation you have? Pray without what? Season. That means pray without stopping. All right. Okay. Uh, I said all that to say that if you don't know many Bible passages, you should know Jesus wept. <laughs> and you should know pray continually. Two words. Okay. So it said, I, I know two verses in the Bible. One is Jesus wept. The other one is pray continually. All right. So it's really important. When we look at prayer, when we look at prayer, we've talked about this this past uh, Wednesday when we had our general cell meeting together. And we talked about prayer. And we talked about prayer uh, a few years ago. A Southern Baptist uh, man that wrote a a book called Master Life. His name is uh, Willis. Uh, Avery Willis. Avery Willis wrote uh, the Master Life uh, program, and that Master Life program helped us to put prayer into an acrostic. Prayer into an acrostic, and the acrostic is a C T S. That's what prayer is. Prayer is acts. A C T S. And the A stands for what? Adoration. Adoration means you praising God. Adoration means that you learn more about what God says about Himself and you say it back to Him. You learn, if you want to really, truly praise God, you have to be able to memorize scripture. You have to be able to read the Bible and learn what God says about himself. And even if you have not experienced it in your life, you know it is true because the Bible is true. So you repeat it to God, you let him know that he is almighty, that he is holy, that he is righteous, that he is kind, that he is merciful, that he surrounds his people as the mountains surround about Jerusalem. The Lord is with his people. The Lord moves and walks among his people. The Lord is righteous. The Lord is a holy God. The Lord is the mover of all things. The Lord is the strength of my light. The Lord is the light of my life. And he is the one who lights my path. God is powerful. God saved his people. When Pharaoh thought he had all power, God rose up and taught him a lesson. And that is what adoration is. Adoration is just praising God for what he is. Who he is and what he has done. Now the second one is confession. Confession in prayer means you recognize that you are the son of Adam and Eve. You are the daughter of Adam and Eve. And just like they were kicked out of the garden, you were kicked out of the garden. And because you've been kicked out of the garden, you are not perfect. I don't care what you think about yourself. You are less than what you think. Amen. Say it. Say it. And you need God to put you in the right place. I, I don't care if you're a preacher, a deacon, a Sunday school teacher, a cell group leader, the Pope. It doesn't matter who you are. You need the forgiveness of God in your life. In fact, some of you need the forgiveness of God right now. 
As I'm preaching, you're looking at me. I don't know what you're thinking. And you probably say, God, I'm glad he doesn't know what I'm thinking. But the point is, we are people, we are in the flesh. Even when you become a Christian, you still have your old nature. Amen. Some of you have discovered your old nature in the parking lot. And you just got out of service. And that is why we need confession. That is why we need to practice the presence of God. First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's who He is. Woo! I'm thankful that He forgives. Thanksgiving. That's why I thank God. Thanksgiving is not just praising God for who he is. Thanksgiving is thanking God for what he has done. Amen? Amen? If you don't know what to thank God for, come ask me. Okay? If you feel, you know, he hasn't done that much for me. The fact that you are able to say that makes you a liar. Because if he hasn't done much for you, you should be in the grave right now. You should not be looking at me right now. You have eyes, you can see. You have ears, you can hear. You have mouth, you're going to eat after church. And then you have the food that you're going to eat. Amen. Amen. You thank God. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your children. Yes, even the bad ones. Amen. Thank God God gave them to you so you can make them good. Amen. You weren't good either when you were a kid. <laughs> Thanksgiving, just thank God. I thank God that I'm just here today. Amen. You know, I thank God that it takes me a while to get to the bathroom in the morning. Amen. Ask Frida, when we first got married, get up. Let, let me tell you what happens now. <laughs> it takes a few minutes. Amen. I thank God I can still walk. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then God said, I don't want you to just praise me and, and just worship me. I want to know what's going on with you. What do you need? What do you want? If you live close to me, if you worship me, if you do this, I guarantee you, you're not going to be in want. You're not going to be in need. Praise the Lord. Dominic, where's your mom? Where's your dad? Tell them when you get home, Pastor has. Okay? Yes, yeah. <laughs> a bakery. Okay. <laughs> they should have given it to the pastor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, 
If you give me about 15 minutes, I'll be done. Okay? I just want to leave you with six points that we need to look at in all the three passages. And I'm only going to read one of them, Matthew chapter 6. And I want you to please pay attention to it. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start with verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is on sin. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Notice he didn't say this is what you should pray. He said this is how you should pray. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we, are, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as some you saw on the video as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head. And wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting. But only to your father who is on sin and your father who says what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. So I want to say uh, uh, five points, six points, excuse me. First point. Prayer time is not show time. Okay, prayer time is not show time. When you are praying, now remember this, that Jesus also taught us to pray together. When he was talking about where two or three are gathered in my name, it's not talking about a church service. I know a lot of times when we don't have too many people in church, we stand up and say, well, Jesus said we're two or three. That's wrong. He wasn't talking about no church service. He was talking about prayer. So he's saying, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. In other words, when we pray together, corporate prayer, we have two, three, four, five, twenty, a thousand, whatever. We pray together. That is public prayer, corporate prayer. God wants us to have that. In fact, when you look at the book of Acts, there is a time that was set aside that the people of God went for prayer together. If you're keeping yourself away from time of prayer, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because you say, oh, I pray in my room. Jesus said, go into your room. This, you know, there's not only one verse in the Bible about prayer. There are many. And when you look at them, Jesus doesn't want us to just be 
isolated in time of prayer. But the point that Jesus is bringing to us is that whenever we are praying publicly or privately, prayer time is not show time. Okay? Don't do it in such a way that everybody will know you're religious. Because if you've done that, Jesus said, you have already received your reward. Your reward is people look at you and say, oh, what a religious person. That's it. You got it. All the prayers you said didn't go anywhere. Amen. Even when you're doing it in private, it doesn't mean you go into your room, you close the door. Everybody, it's time for me to pray. (laughs) Then you get there, you fall asleep for 15, 20 minutes. Then you come out, I just finished praying. When you are praying, it is between you and God, and it's very important that you take it that way, whether it be private or it be public. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that make some of our prayers really, really show time. But but let me let me let me deal with one other thing that we all need to get this based on the passage, based on the whole Bible. Prayer is private and public. Don't let the last time you prayed be when you were praying in church. That's very significant because prayer should be everyday event. What Jesus is saying is don't be like he used the word hypocrites. The word hypocrites comes from the Greek hypocrites. And the word hypocrites was not actually used regularly just on the street. It was a theater language. It was what the people used, which is similar to what happens on Halloween in America. People come out on Halloween as hypocrites. They're looking like somebody else. They look like a Jedi. They look like Obama. They look like Reagan. And some of them look like the creature from the Blue Lagoon. And different things, you know. (laughs) And the uh, Black Lagoon, well, it's blue too. (laughs) so you see what they do in theater is they will have the face of the emperor or the face of the god or the face of something and they will come out and that is who they are And they would do all the plays with this. And those who did the play like this were called the Hippocrates. Pretending to be somebody that you're not. Showtime. The Jesus Showtime. Hasn't shouted all week. A prayer time comes. Oh. Some people, you have to be careful not to sit next to them. Amen. Because uh, when the Holy Spirit gets them, quote unquote, <laughs> they're going everywhere. If you can hit somebody, it wasn't the Holy Spirit.
Amen? Unless if they've been sinning all week. <laughs> Let's not be hypocritical when we pray. Also, prayer is not judged by its length or his spiritual terminologies. Some people feel that uh, God is so dumb. Lord, you know when I got up this morning, since you didn't know, I mean, you know, sometimes when you hear Christians pray, uh, that's why a lot of people think that the God we serve is so uh, unreal. Because the way we pray. But we just want to make it long. Now, don't get intimidated by people who use big religious language when they pray. Some of them have memorized this over years and they think it's what makes their prayer very righteous. Prayer, Sister Brown, is simply talking with God. Amen? Prayer is just talking with God. Lord, please give me a hundred dollars. Amen? Do you think God understands that? And some people will just find something else, you know. There's something that they're going to make it. Oh, Lord. Give me the centurion shining green paper. <laughs> Even some of you didn't understand what I said. <laughs> God said, what did you say? <laughs> I thought I would impress you so you could answer my prayer. He said, dummy, it's called $100. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Give me a female. <laughs> that is of this species. <laughs> okay. Lord, I need a Christian wife. Amen, John? <laughs> now, the other thing that we need to be careful in our prayers is that prayer has some acceptable elements in it as we talk about Acts. But also, the following should be noted when you pray. Please, too many repetitions in your prayer is actually bad. Amen? Now, God talks about coming back and asking over and over and over again. He doesn't mean in one prayer. You need to read that passage very carefully. And sometimes you're in a prayer meeting and that's why a prayer meeting is so long. Somebody pray for Sister Jones, then the next person acted like they weren't even listening. And pray for Sister Jones again. And 
And everybody left out uh, Dorothy. That's supposed to be prayed for because 19 people are praying for Jones have been prayed for already. You're supposed to agree with people in prayer and not act like you were thinking about food while they were praying. And then something because, okay, let me repeat it so I can be spiritual. Lord, we need revival. Lord, we need revival. Lord, we need revival. Okay, three different kinds of revivals? Or four different kinds of revivals? And, you know, sometimes I, I believe God is just having fun. It's not answering our prayers. We're making him laugh. At our prayers, you know, uh, stop that habit. Pay attention to the other person. Agree with them. And if they're saying, you're not holier than they are. It doesn't mean that they're asking so. I got to ask it because that person is not holy. Let me say mine. Because that prayer didn't go anywhere. I better say something about that again. You, you don't have that authority. Another thing is, many of us use God's name in vain more than the people in the world. I don't know where we got Father God from. Father God. Father God. He is God the Father. He's not Father God. He's not Father Christmas. Somebody started it, some ignorant person started it, and we all pick it up. Father God, Father God, Father God. And that's all, you know, sometimes many of us just feel the name of God we just use God's name to the point where after a while God wants to slap you. And sometimes we just put the name of God in there if we don't have anything else to say. Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, I pray. Lord, and you know, it's, it's amazing, and we think it's spiritual. Oren, did you go, Oren, did you understand that, Oren, I'm really telling you this because your wife, Oren, it's really important, Oren. I, I, uh, what's your other name you have? <laughs> oh, give me another name. Give me another name. OC. Oren OC. Mr. Carpenter. Brother Carpenter. Did you hear what I just said? Carpenter, did you hear? You need to give me some money, Carpenter. Give me some money. Oren. It's amazing. If we look at your prayer and we take God out and we take Lord out and we take Jesus out, you didn't say anything. And you spent five minutes wasting our time. Now, some are so bad, they make you think they're ending their prayers. He already said, in the name of the Lord Jesus and, and God. You 
You just love to hear yourself. And please don't make announcements in your prayers. Don't make announcements in your prayers. It's just like uh, somebody standing up and say, Lord, we just want the people of the church to be able to know this, that they're serving free food on Tuesday at 2 o'clock at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. I don't know why you didn't submit that in the announcements. For the announcement. God is not interested in your announcements. And then some announcements are like outing other people. You know what I'm Lord, yeah, we had some young people that went dancing last night. Even though some of them are right here, Lord, tell them it's wrong. <laughs> you see, because it, it's amazing. Instead of us confronting people, we make it into prayer. And the last bad habit we have is with. We're telling God what we think he approves. When it is nowhere to be found in the Bible. If you cannot pray scripture, shut up. It's scripture. God said, anything you want to ask, ask me. Don't ask for somebody else unless you are in intercessory prayer. You don't have the right to out anybody and say it's oh it is just righteous indignation. It, it's 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 amazing because Jesus told the story of two people who went to the altar to pray. One of them looked and they say. <laughs> That guy there, he's not like me. Lord, you know I come to you now because I want something, but you know I've given you so much. I, I give my tithes. And that one, he steals from people. You know, I do this, I do that. You know, just out in the other people. And God, God wasn't even listening to you because he knew your intention. That's why we Christians have confession. You don't have to wait for somebody to confess for you. Confess your sins before God and God forgives you. Let me tell you this. If you confess your sin before God and you still feel guilty about it, you haven't confessed. Because confession has the element of repentance. Okay. Next point. Prayer is... I went over time. Prayer is acceptable only when we practice forgiveness in our lives. Now, you can't bargain with God on that. Uh, Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Oh, you just didn't know what he did. Now, I tell you, if you gave your tithes, and I, I was told you collected tithes and offering first thing today. So those of you that came in late, you still need to give your tithes and your offering before you leave. Don't take it home. And let me tell you why. Because God said, if you come to the altar to give your offering and you remember that somebody has done something against you and you are holding it against them, you need to go back, set it straight. 
Notice they come back and put the money back in there, right? You know, many of us, we live our lives like, God forgive me, but I ain't going to forgive that person. You're just wasting your time praying. So if you want to want, if you want to find the reason why maybe your prayers have not been answered, it's because you're still holding grudges against people. God is going to treat you exactly like you treat people. I'm going to end before you start throwing stones. Now, I hope that this month, this is the last point. I hope that this month I have a page that I give to the ushers, and they're going to hand them out to you if you want them. If you don't want them, don't worry. This, this is a page of specific prayers in the Bible. Not all of them, but specific ones that I've chosen, about 17 or so. The Lord's Prayer, Prayer of Jabez, the Prayer of Moses, the Prayer of Joshua, the Prayer of Gideon, the Prayer of Hannah, the Prayer of Samuel, Prayer of Solomon, Elijah's Prayer, Hezekiah's Prayer, David's Prayer for Solomon, Ezra's Prayer, Solomon's Prayer, Nehemiah's Prayer, David's Prayer in the Psalms, Daniel's Prayer, Jonah's Prayer, and to, to, to round it all, Jesus' Prayer. As we go through this prayer and fasting, just look at some of them. Look at some of the elements. Look at some of the elements. and uh, See, you know, prayer is the best thing in life. If you're not praying, you're giving God the silent treatment. I don't like silent treatment. You wake up in the morning, you see your dad, your mother, your wife, your husband. You didn't say anything to anybody. Just go, ah, I'm going to cook this, I'm going to cook that. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and everybody that loves you and cares about you there around you, everybody says, oh, what's wrong? God wants to fellowship with you. Before you get crazy. <laughs> may, you don't know. You don't know what that means. Sometimes. You know. You get out of the house. And you've prayed with God. You've sang. You've cried. You've done everything. Because you had a wonderful time with God. You get in your car. You get on the road. You made a slight mistake on the road. And somebody is calling you and your mama. And you know what you want to do or what you want to say. But, you know, that fellowship you had with God kept coming over. And say, hey, keep your fingers to yourself. Amen. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. That sister Yvonne said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, th this is what we want to do. Look at uh, the, the, God has not left us without examples. We look to it. We look through it. We use this as we pray. And if you can, you get one on your way out. And um, please, also the newsletter is so important. It's always important, but the direction for how we should fast. Uh, and also, I believe the last uh, week, we're going to have a prayer wheel so that for that week, there's no hour during the day that we are not praying as a church. So we're going to fill that out. Amen. God is good all the time.